Hi and welcome to Thriver TV, the place to break free from narcissistic abuse with quantum tools and understandings. And today's episode is the second of my uh, series, which is clearing your susceptibility to narcissists. And this week's episode is about seeking approval. And this is a really important topic because society has taught us an outside in orientation that getting approval from outside of ourselves will actually reflect back to us our value. And the problem is when we are seeking outer approval, it is a bottomless pit because no matter what we're getting from other people, if we don't have a solid sense of approval to self, we're never going to feel full and it's never going to hold and it's never going to really feel valid for us. So if, how do we know? How do we know that we're seeking out of approval? There's some really sure signs of if we're doing that. And one of them is we're going to be easily triggered by other people's opinions of us. So if somebody has an opinion of us that differs from the one that we need or that we want them to have, we can feel really hurt and we can hook in and feel this anxiety and pain unless we can convince them to have an opinion of us that we would like them to have. So it means we're actually really precariously poised on in the ways that we interact with people. Also too, we can be saying yes when we really would like to say no. And this is a malfunctioning boundary. So that means that we're going to be handing over our time and our resources and our energy and our efforts to the detriment of ourselves. And our catch cry from that can be, well, look at all the things that I do for you that, and you don't do things for me or you don't appreciate me, you don't value me. These are all the signs that we're seeking out of approval. In my life, seeking approval was a huge part of my life that I would find that I was always trying to be better, do more, give more, uh, be the person that other people wanted me to be in order to feel loved and approved of. And it didn't work. It turned out really badly. And what was always reflected back to me was really all the evidence of how I actually felt about myself, which was that I wasn't loving and approving of myself. And that journey ended up uh, not just one, but two narcissistic relationships where I played this out until I really was able to heal this. And this is a massive hook for narcissistic abuse that many people uh, are unconsciously doing. And it's a very, very common thing for codependents to be seeking out approval and not aware that they're doing it because it's been your normal ever since a child. You've known no other way to operate. And it's a really big attraction point for narcissists like blood is to sharks because for a narcissist, they can easily attract narcissistic supply, which is energy and time and resources and sex and money from people that are trying to seek approval. Because when we're codependent and trying to seek approval, we're always trying to give more. We're always trying to prove our worth. We're always trying to do more so that people will love and approve of us. And with narcissists, they are continually raising the bar. That's what narcissists do. It's well, okay, you need to prove more to me. You need to show me more. I'm going to hit you with guilt and accusations and I'm going to project my wounded self onto you, telling you that you are not good enough to be loved and approved of by me. And the codependent will stay hooked into that, continually trying harder. So how did all of this get set up in our childhoods? in really, really simple way. And it was by parents who also had never become a solid source of love and approval to themselves because they were parented in very similar ways. And what happened in this standard societal parenting is that feelings were invalidated. So as a child, if our feelings were deemed as irrelevant or um, uh, 
you know, a waste of time and they were dismissed, that meant that we were irrelevant, that we were a waste of time, that we were not uh, valid, we were not worthy of attention, we were not worthy of approval, we were not worthy of love. So we grew up with, with damaged inner beings that never felt whole or loved of appro or approved of authentically, that were always seeking that outer approval. And for codependence, it's very, very common to have um, obsessive compulsive disorders and perfectionism, which is that internalized inner critical uh, parental voice, which is I'm not good enough. I need to do more to prove my worth. I need to carry more of the burden. It's, it, it really translates as people that have trouble delegating and we think, well, you know, it's up to us to do the right thing and it's up for us to, uh, to take this share of the burden and, and um, prove our worth. So for the, for the typical codependent who's seeking outer approval is we're always trying harder, we're always doing more, we're actually really quite exhausted by trying to be everything for everybody else in order to unconsciously, that, that inner wounded child is screaming out, you know, please just love and approve of me. If I do this, will you please this time love and approve of me? So we're running around crazy doing all this stuff for people, just hoping to get that pat on that back, on the back and that validation of thank you. And, you know, I'm really grateful and you've done a, a really lovely job and, um, you know, I really love you for that. That's what we're seeking. But in the quantum reality of life, we can only ever receive back from the field, which is life and others, a reflection of where we're really actually at with ourselves. And this is the whole irony about seeking approval is we get it in droves when we don't need it. When we already are that state of love and approval to self, well, we're not going to twist ourselves into a thousand different shapes and exhaust ourselves trying to get validation. We're actually just going to authentically be ourselves with healthy boundary function and we'll say no when we mean no. And we'll do so much less than what we're doing as codependents and yet we're going to get approved of. We're going to get our worth reflected back to us very, very easily. And we're also too, when we are a solid source of love and approval to ourselves, we, we do not buy into somebody else having a different version of ourselves. And it pretty much goes like this. Well, if you don't love and approve of me, um, that's okay. You can have your opinion. I already love and approve of myself. Absolutely, I'm open to grow and, you know, have my stuff reflected back at me, but I'm very, very clear that there's a huge difference between you, that, and you projecting your wounds at me in ways that are unhealthy uh, because you don't love and approve of yourself. So you start, as you develop yourself into a, an inner solidness, there's no longer that confusion. You're not um, a wounded child showing up just really confused. You're an adult in your own body knowing exactly what the difference is. And we can start generating a life which reflects back more love and approval rather than less because, well, that's okay. Go on your merry way. You don't love and approve of me. You don't love and approve of yourself. You've got stuff. Um, I'm just generating wholeness now and evolutionary healthy relationships of honest communication and honest self-ownership. That's not you. That's okay. Bye. You know, so we no longer need to hook up with people in a sense, um, like in a friendship sense, in a, in a business sense. We don't even have to hang out with family members anymore that are like that. And we certainly don't need to create love relationships like that anymore when we've up leveled beyond all of that stuff. And it's just, just so, so important. Now, and with narcissistic relationships, what is happening is we're getting our, our wounded parts that don't love and approve of ourselves reflected back in vivid technicolor in such a way that it's so painful that we can't miss them. And that's the evolutionary gift of it. But what happens normally in the normal victim consciousness is we miss it. 
And this is the orientation that is not working when we're trying to heal from this. Because if we as an adult hold the narcissist in our life responsible for our own levels of love and approval, that equals how to lose. We're in wrong town and there's no healing and relief in that. And we can understand how that happens because as an adult, um, if we're a wounded child, we're still showing up as a wounded child. And we were all taught to believe that the parents in our life should love and approve of us. And sadly, if they were never loved and approved of, they can't. They don't have the resources. You cannot give and lead to where, you've ne where you are not yourself. It's that simple. And a lot of people in this community have said things to me like, Melanie, it's okay for you. You're an adult, you know, in a narcissistic love relationship. What about us that were brought up by narcissists? As children, we had no hope. I really want you to understand that whether or not any of us had NPD, narcissistic personality disorder parents, we were brought up with unconscious parenting and that unconscious parenting was all about invalidating feelings, not allowing us to develop into whole and full selves. It also was about critical parenting. Our parents were brought up with the old paradigm of tough love, that if you're criticized, you'll be motivated. So it went like, um, okay, you did that okay, but you can do better next time. You know, you can always do better. And what happened with that is we were never able to say, well, I feel okay now. I'm only going to be okay and worthy of love and approval if I better myself. You know, so that bottomless pit, that compulsion, that anxiety meant a damaged inner being that didn't feel whole and loved and approved of. And what we know now with emotional intelligence and with subconscious programming and development is the most important thing for a child is not worrying about chasing achievement, is feeling loved and approved of and whole simply for who they are. And then that gorgeous foundation is where everything else can get added onto and built in healthy ways. And if that foundation is not there, and it wasn't for any of us as a ch who have been narcissistically abused, it just wasn't there. If that foundation wasn't there, well then what happened is we had a damaged inner being and we were maladapting. We were trying to seek relief from outside of ourselves rather than fixing our inner being which meant that we were going to seek false substitutes for approval, which means we we're at dire risk of attracting false selves, which are people that also don't love and approve of themselves that are maladapting, except in malicious consciousness ways, which is really the only difference between codependence and narcissists. The damaged inner being is the same. But the difference is, is that we, we have a desire to meet our inner selves and to heal and uplevel them, which as adults we can do, whereas narcissists have completely divorced them and won't do that. That's the only difference. So the remedy and the solution to all of this is never about getting outside approval because at the quantum level of life, it's an impossibility. You cannot get what you are not being to self. So we can only be to self, and then we're just gonna generate a whole heap more of that. Ironically, we don't even need it, but it's gonna add more to our joy and our fullness and our expansions and our extensions into life, which is the thriver orientation. So how do we heal this? I wanna give you an exercise which I think can really, really help. And you might have done my exercise last week and this is similar but with this exercise what i want you to do i want you to i want you to feel into a goal i want to create a goal with this and the goal that we can have is i am enough i am enough i am worthy of love and approval and i want you to write it down write that down i am enough i am worthy of love and approval Okay, so 
I am enough, I am worthy of love and approval. That's our goal. So let's check in and see where you're at with that goal. Now, this is not what you'd like to be in your mind. This is where you are in your body with this. We have to understand how you feel about something is your truth, not what you're trying to think. Your truth is in your body. It's in your subconscious programming. And if your subconscious is, well, I'm not worthy of love and approval, you're not going to get it. You cannot get it, it's an impossibility. You don't have access to it in the field, you can't generate it. You have to change you to change your life. So if you feel into your body, let's say a one out of 10, if you rated it is, well, I'm, I, gee, I'm not, I, feel, I, I don't feel worthy of love and approval, I don't feel whole, I don't feel like people um, value me at all. You might be a one out of 10. A 10 out of 10 would be, I, I feel really whole in my body. I feel really worthy of love and approval. I can allow other people to have their opinions about me. It, it doesn't threaten my, um, my inner identity at all. I, I, I'm worthy of love and approval. I, I just am. And more than that, I am love. I just am love and I approve of myself fully. That would be a 10 out of 10. So where are you on the scale? I want you to write it down. Just trust yourself and write it down. Beautiful. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check into our body where we feel the block. So for example, let's say you wrote a two out of 10. That means you've got eight parts missing. And that's going to be letting you be your goal. And that's going to be a block in your body. So it's going to be like an anxiety or a tension or a, um, a fear or pain or, and this is where we start checking into our subconscious, which is the vault that holds all the information. And to unlock ourselves, we need to unlock this. So where do you feel this in your body? Is it in your heart? Is it in your solar plexus? Is it somewhere else? Is it so big it just feels like it's everywhere under your skin inside you? And really open your body up and breathe. That gives you access to the inside and you can close your eyes and really go in and feel. You've got to trust. When you start making contact with your inner being, it's going to be very subtle. And the more you do it and the more self-partnered you get, the stronger and more profound it gets. You've got to start somewhere. When you come in your body, you start self-partnering. You start coming home to self. All your answers are in here. None of them are out there. So where is it in your body? I want you to write that down. Beautiful. And now the next step is, is you're going to Go into that part of yourself and be with it fully and unconditionally. And you're going to ask it, what is this really about? And I want you to really trust, what is this about? And you're also going to ask, how old am I? How old is this part of me? Okay, and you might get a feeling like two, it just sort of comes up, or three, or seven, or it might be I'm in the womb. You've got to just really trust your subconscious knows. How old am I? Tap into that first, how old am I? And write it down. And you might feel like you're just making this up. And you need to understand intuition and imagination are very, very closely linked. Because it kind of goes like this. Well, why would I be making that up? But do not scan your logical memory for answers. Listen to what your body tells you as a gut feeling, as a flash. Beautiful. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to what is this about? Really? feel into it, just allow. It might just be painful feelings or emotions. You might get a scene, you might get a memory come up from within you. 
And by writing this down and tapping into this, what you are doing is you are making the unconscious conscious. You are releasing it, you're healing it. As long as you don't judge it, as long as you can just be with it lovingly and unconditionally with fascination because you're going to see the patterns and what you've been playing out and you are releasing and healing just by doing this. Okay, and you just write and write and write. And you're probably gonna tap into this after this video. You're getting the instructions here. Beautiful. So look, I hope that this one has really helped, really helped you understand what happens when we're seeking out of approval, really given you some tools to be able to start healing it and evolving and awakening yourself so that you can get out of these skirmishes and these patterns. And if you want to take this journey further, I would love you to, and you can do that by accessing some of my free resources which you can do so by clicking the button that appears on this video. And also too, I'd love you to come into my three keys to thriving after narcissistic abuse, three hour teleseminar, where you learn intricately how to apply quantum energetic tools to access your subconscious and up level it so that you can find how to heal these old programs really powerfully and instantly. So that's it from me and to the next episode. So keep healing and keep smiling and keep thriving because there is nothing else to do. Lots of love. Bye-bye.